Episode 9 Seventh time is the charm. Somewhere in Upper Egypt. It was such a pleasant evening, our last night on the ship. We could not ask for better weather. It was so beautiful out and things were just going great. Everybody was in such a good mood. And well, then evening turned into dusk and dinner was served. We all headed down to the mess hall where our usual was served. I had my typical beef, whatever it was, and my meat labeled chicken. And I ordered enough ice water to drown a horse for the entire table because when in a desert, you need water and ice water is always good. So very important. And then after dinner, we all headed to the lounge where we were going to be entertained. And well, for the first part of the show, that was kind of amazing because a belly dancer showed up. expecting more of a scantily clad belly dancer, but that was not this kind of show. She was really good though, and really fascinating to watch. A Turkish dervish showed up and he showed us his amazing moves. I had never seen anything like this before. that exciting entertainment, we all made a special presentation, a special thanks to our guides, Amira and Normin. They were so amazing, so awesome. They made the trip such a wonderful experience, and I couldn't ask for a better guide. The next morning, we all woke up early to pack up our belongings. This was the last morning on the ship. And I had snuck down to the mess hall for a cup of coffee and a quick egg. Meanwhile, our luggage was taken to the bus by the ship's bellhops. And this gave us all a chance to say our goodbyes to the wonderful crew on the ship. And we all gathered in the lobby and said our goodbyes. Then off to the bus, happily named the saboteur. And from there, we made our way to the east bank of Luxor, to the Karnak Temple Complex, which was once part of the primary city of Thebes.
This enormous complex was under constant construction for about 1,800 years, and about 30 kings and pharaohs added to its splendor, including Seti I, Amenhotep III, and Ramses II. Like a real game of Age of the Empires. Originally built for the worship of the Egyptian god Amun-Ra, the city was partitioned off in corridors and rows of pylons, columns, shrines, and courtyards for worship. Ramses III had a temple constructed for the worship of the god Pons, while Hatshepsut had a temple dedicated to the god Ta. This vast city would have been such a great sight to see during its peak at the end of the Egyptian Empire, about 11th century BCE. However, by 30 BCE, Egypt was under Roman rule and many of the temples were converted into Christian places of worship. The Coptic Orthodox Church had already been well established in Egypt by this time and the religion had spread rapidly throughout Thebes. The new religion created such a contentious split between the Egyptians and the Roman citizens. Many Egyptians were forced out of the city under Roman rule, and those who stayed were later persecuted. Then, around 323 AD, Constantine the Great adopted Christianity as the dominant religion of the Roman Empire, including most Egyptian cities and villages. Karnak soon became a place for the Copts to gather and worship until its complete desertion under the reign of Constantius II in 337 AD, when he completely closed the pagan city and went all war crazy, creating chaos and mayhem and making a lot of enemies in the meantime. Nonetheless, the Karnak temple was still beautiful and we all made our way to the back side of the complex where we stumbled upon the Keper Scarab sculpture. And they say that circling it seven times brings you good luck and then grants your wishes. Well, I ended up making two wishes and I got my steps in for the day. Before we knew it, we were back on the bus headed to the Temple of Luxor. This temple was built for King Ramses II. It was the place for the Opet Festival, dedicated to the cult of Ka. Now this was just a short trip. Most of us were just hot and tired and hungry and we just wanted to get back on the bus. So we all headed back to the bus where we headed out for lunch. And this is where we stopped at this odd restaurant. We headed up the stairs and we entered this interesting, well, fascinatingly Egyptian restaurant. And I was not too thrilled to buy all of the food, to be honest. I waited unexcitedly for the lamb logs and the pigeon to come back out. And I sat there waiting while everyone ate bread and rice and their soup. And the vegetables came out and I waited some more. And many people ordered 
either juice or a Coke. I ordered water. And by the time the lamb logs and the mystery meat came out, well, I was starving. And several people gave me their lamb logs to eat. I was still not thrilled. I thought I was done eating those things. Mm. Not impressed at all. And before I knew it, it was time to leave again. I was unimpressed by the food. And so we all headed back down to the bus. I was still kind of hungry, but ah, what are you going to do? They're lamb logs. And, well, we were traveling to our next destination, Hergata, where the next part of the trip begins. <laughs>